just to come into this place. Sometimes you need to invite the spirit to come into your life. Amen. Somebody ought to welcome me. Listen, too many times we push away the spirit when the spirit is trying to do something. But you ought to stand boldly and welcome it and say, come on in. Come on, spirit, do what's necessary in my life. Do what's necessary. Lord, Just a few announcements that we have on this morning that we want to make sure that we get out. Um, let us, first of all, let us continue to pray one for another that uh, we God moves in such a miraculous way, uh, not only just in our lives, but in this world as a whole. Amen. Amen. The devil continues to run rampant, continues to seek. Uh, going to and fro, seeking who that he may devour, but we are leaning and trusting and calling on God for his protection, amen, each and every day. So let us keep in mind, pray for one another, but also continue to keep our pastor, uh, Dr. McNamee, lifted in your thoughts and your prayers. We are also continuing to uh, pray for Brother Moore, who lost his sister, uh, those services are still pending at this time, but we are still asking and soliciting your prayers for Brother Moore and his family. And then also, uh, we hadn't called his name in a while, and that's all right. I was reminded on today uh, that uh, somebody had good conversation and they're asking for prayer. So we want to pray for not only uh, Sister Sabrina, but we're still praying for Brother Courtney King. Amen. 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 Uh, ask that we just continue to pray for him and continue to keep him lifted. So we are asking and we are lifting not only him but his family as a whole. Amen. 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 All right. Um, July 30th. July 30th is rapidly approaching. That is our second annual. Amen. Second annual stuff the trunk event for all of our college bound students. Amen. So we are looking forward to that event. We have four uh, college students that did go in and officially register. So we have four students that will be heading off to college. I think one is going to take off a little before that, but that's all right. We're going to make sure that we get that student taken care of. Amen. So uh, let us be mindful that that event is July 30th. That's a Saturday at noon. So if you feel down, uh, your form, you will be, uh, we will be getting in contact with you with further information. But uh, ushers, uh, music department, mission, youth department, you have all been asked and tasked with some items to bring for each of those individuals. Uh, those are posted on the uh, site. I also sent those out, so I won't belabor the time of going through uh, and mentioning all of those. But if you need to know again, please see me. And I will make sure that you know the information that is required of your ministry. Amen? Amen. Amen. First Sunday. Wait, let me back up. We got a fifth Sunday. Fifth Sunday. Uh, fifth Sunday, we have deemed it as our fifth Sunday giving blitz. Amen. 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 We're asking that every household, not an individual, uh, we, we're, we're making it a little easy. So every household we're asking that you would give $200 over and beyond what you would normally give through your offering. So please, please let us uh, do that. There are some things that we're still trying to get accomplished here at the church to help make this facility that that God would have it to be and comfortable for us. Amen. 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 So there are some things that need to get taken care of. So to not be too taxing, we are asking every fifth Sunday, Fifth Sunday Giving Bliss that we would give $200 as a household over and beyond what you would normally give. Amen. All right. So then we move to First Sunday. First Sunday, uh, this first Sunday, we're excited because we get to go to the wall. Amen. We have one candidate for baptism. And uh, let me throw this out there. There's still time. 
there's still time for uh, to you to take place in the first Sunday baptism uh, on the first Sunday along with communion. So we encourage everybody to be here in that grand celebration of that candidate that will be getting baptized on the first Sunday. Also, the first Sunday is uh, what we've been planning for uh, for a while with the North Texas District Association. Uh, Sunday, August the 7th at 4 p.m., that is the first Sunday, we will be uh, convening for the 1,000 women in white. So please, uh, ma'ams, please make sure that you have your white and you're ready for that service at 4 o'clock on the first Sunday at the Mount Olive Baptist Church in Fort Worth. In Fort Worth, that is uh, 2951 Evans Avenue in Fort Worth, Texas. I'll make sure that information is out so that you can have it. But that is also the same event, the same uh, 1,000 women in white that we will be there in full support of where is she, Morgan? Where are you? I saw you. There you go. Amen. Morgan will be our representative at this uh, debutante, if you will, and we have all supported. We bought ads, we pushed, and we are now ready to go and see her uh, all dolled up and ready for this event on the first Sunday. So not only is it the 1,000 women in life, it's also that event. So I'm asking everybody that can, everybody that would all go with us on that Sunday, uh, if nothing else, to go and support our own Morgan uh, as she represents the Great El Bubba Baptist Church uh, during that event. And they will also be acknowledging Great El Bethel as a new member of that uh, association as well. All right. Uh, I don't think, I think I've covered them all. Uh, we are still gearing up. The next major event is our annual youth day, the second Sunday in September. And I know they <laughs> very That's all right. <laughs> They are planning. We've already locked in the minister for that morning. Amen. So we are looking forward to having a mighty good time on the second Sunday in September for our annual youth day. All right. Um, let's. Let's go ahead. All right. Let's go ahead and have our tithe and offering. <laughs> I was trying to see if I was going to push it out, but there she is. Amen. <laughs> Say, tithe and offer, she come ready. I'm ready. Amen. So if you need to be serviced by an usher with an envelope, please raise your hand and they'll make sure you have whatever it is that you need. It is giving time. Amen. Amen. If you're watching online, we thank you for your presence of watching, but there's also ways that you can help by sowing a seed into this ministry. Amen. It should be showing to you right now. We encourage you to sow a seed uh, and give your offering as well through one of those methods. All right. God is good. Amen. Listen, it's good to see all y'all here today.
we ask this all from you. Use for which it is given, which is kingdom building. Bless those that gave, those that had the desire to give, but had it not. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Happy to see Grim Punch. Kim folks sitting over there in life. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. All right. Quiet. We're back in your hands.
Keep me humble, God, that I may be able to do your will in your fashion. Now, God, open the hearts, the minds, the ears of these, your people, that your word may be a bed within their heart. God, that they may hear from you. And if they do not know you, God, they may come running, saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Now have thine own way, like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. James chapter 5, verse 16. And then the older, older preachers would say the B clause of that verse, which reads as follows, just the B clause that says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. If you don't mind allowing me to use just for a thought or a subject, keep praying. Amen. Keep praying. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Listen, prayer is, to use a quick definition so that you can have a good understanding, prayer is relational communication with God. It's the opportunity each believer has to communicate with God for whom nothing shall be called impossible. The opportunity for us to talk to God who lovingly and consistently talks back to us. For prayer is a relational communication with God. If and when you have a relationship with God, you just ought to talk to God every now and then. If you claim to have a relationship with anybody, you want to talk to them every now and then. So, so, so what we consider prayer, uh, this medium of prayer, is relational communication with God. It's an opportunity for us to talk to God and know that in God's own time, God will talk back to us. Listen, prayer is necessary in a believer's life. Once you come to the reality that you cannot handle life by yourself, when you understand that you cannot deal with the pressures and the pitfalls and the setbacks and the scandals of life by yourself, when you recognize that you cannot handle this life on your own, listen, it just makes sense that you would talk to somebody who's greater than you are. Talk to somebody who's mightier than you are. Talk to somebody who's more able than you are. Listen, prayer is relational conversation with God. And may I suggest this morning that prayer, watch this, that prayer was never intended to be an event. Prayer was never intended to be an event. It is intended to be a lifestyle that you should have a lifestyle of prayer, that you are in a relationship with God, you should have a lifestyle of prayer. Watch this, listen to what God says through Jeremiah. He says, call on me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. And I submit to you that this morning that God intends for us to talk to him, and he intends to talk back to us. Listen, I remember what the passage of scripture says in the book of uh, 2 Chronicles uh, at 7 and 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name would, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. Listen, God says if you talk to me, I'll talk back to you. It should be a lifestyle 
and simply not just an event. As a matter of fact, the book of Luke over chapter 18 and 1 says men and women are always pray. There you go. And faint not. So don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't throw in the towel. Just keep going. Keep on praying because we are so reminded over in Thessalonians 5 and 17 that we ought to pray without ceasing. Help me preach this thing. That we ought to pray without ceasing. There should not be a time. There should not be a season in a believer's life when we don't consistently communicate with the creator. Prayer is supposed to be a lifestyle. Not just an event. And, and I have a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion that there are some people in the house on today that know something about prayer and the power of prayer. Listen, somebody in here knows something about the wonderful benefit that each of us, with that we have, that we are called to be we, when we have a relational communication with God that is a lifestyle and not just an event. And, and apparently, apparently in, in this book of James, apparently James, the baby brother of Jesus, seems to think the exact same way. Because in verse 13, all the way to verse 18, read it when you get a chance. It's in there if you ain't tore it out. In each of those verses, he mentions the necessity, the responsibility that each of us bears to talk to God. In verse 13, in verse 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, the word pray or prayer is mentioned in each of those verses, showing us how important prayer is in the life of the believer. And I know that you like to shout, I know that you like to run, I know that you like to sing, I know, and singing is necessary, and I know that you like to do all that, but every now and then you ought to just communicate with God in conversation. I know, again, singing is necessary, but sometimes you ought to steal away, as they used to say, and have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your faintest cry and answer. Listen, that's something that goes on even further. If you're praying, you'll feel a little prayer will turn. And know that a little fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus. Watch this. Makes everything all right. Prayer. Prayer is a relational communication with God. And James seems to suggest to us that if we have a relationship with God, we ought to be talking to God on a regular. With consistently, consistency. It, it, it's necessary for us to talk to God. But why? Because it should be a lifestyle and not just an event. Did I mention that already? I'm starting to learn that more and more, the more you say things, the more you say things, and you learn more about repetition. And repetition, I, repetition, I found out, is the, the key to retention. So uh, it's a lifestyle and not an event. It's a relational communication with God. So every now and again, I say to you, uh, I may say this over and over. That's why Paul even does it when he's preaching and he's teaching. Listen, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Listen, he had to remind you again, even in that same, because he knows sometimes church folk don't always get it the first time. So prayer is a lifestyle and not just an event. And if you're going to go through this, and if, you, if, you, if you're going to go through these days, as a matter of fact, if you've gone through this day, this far, and you haven't talked to God yet, you might need to check your lifestyle. If you've gone through this whole day, and you didn't pray until I led you in prayer this morning, then you might need to check your lifestyle. It, it may suggest sometimes why you stay weak in this life. Because prayer gives you power to keep on going even when you feel like giving up. Listen, can I get a witness who will testify that prayer works? Prayer changes things. And when you pray, God will answer. And, and that's what James seems to suggest to us, that the effectual, fervent prayers 
of the righteous avails much. But, 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 but that's what the scripture seems to suggest. It suggests, watch this, it is powerful and it's effective. I like those words. Both, both, both Prayer is both powerful and effective. And while James is talking about it, he seems to suggest to us beginning at verse 13 that when we pray, it doesn't matter the season of life in which you find yourself, but when you pray, that prayer is applicable to every circumstance in life. It, it doesn't matter where you are. It's applicable to everything. Look at verse 13. He says, watch this, any among you afflicted, let him pray. And may I suggest to you this morning that there are some seasons in all of our lives when we have to engage in what is being called stressed out supplication. Stressed out supplication. Anybody in here ever been stressed out? Anybody ever really been stressed out? Listen, my wife said it all the time. She tells y'all stressing me out. She, she, she lets her, she's in a house full of men and boys. She's saying, listen, y'all stressing me out. But, but listen, it, it, and, and if you've never been stressed out, listen, maybe you're just so sophisticated. Maybe you just all of that. Maybe you're just so spiritual that you never had a stressful day. God bless you. But some of us, the rest of us, know what it means to have, to have some stress-filled days some stress-filled circumstances. And what James is talking about here, he says, if any among you afflicted, let him pray. And that word afflicted literally means that it's an extended season of suffering. It's, a, it's an extended, protracted season of trouble. It's what the season saints call trials and tribulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And somebody knows what it means to have an extended season of suffering. James says, if any of you are afflicted, if you have any trouble in your life, if you have any frustration in your life, listen, as a matter of fact, that we, we've all gotten so educated and we've all gotten uh, degrees and letters and stuff in front and behind of our names and all of that stuff. But I can remember back when, when the when the real season saints, when I was little, I used to hear and listen to them. They didn't say afflicted. They said, if any of you afflicted, afflicted. They, they took the A off. It was so bad. If you afflicted, call on him. Anybody know what it means to be afflicted? James says, when you get to that point, seasons of suffering, trials and tribulations, protracted trouble, James says, that's the time to pray. That, that, that's not the time to flip out. That, that's not the time to stop coming to church. That's not the time to act as if there's no hope in your situation. James says when you find yourself in these predicaments, you ought to pray. And may I suggest to, may I suggest to us this morning that all of us, all of us need to learn how to pray, watch this, for ourselves. Instead of always depending on somebody else to pray for us. And in a minute, I'll get to it. In a minute, I'm going to get to prayer partners. But I want to talk about right now is the individual responsibility to pray. Because too often, too often, we are expecting everybody else to pray for you. But, 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 but may I suggest this to you also? Can't nobody pray for you like you can pray for you. Because nobody knows what you're going through. Like you know what you're going through. Listen, help me testify because when I got a problem in my life, I know how to bow down on my knees and say, God, if you don't help me through this right now, listen, I understand that every now and again you have to call on the name of the Lord by yourself. So each time we need a word, we have a wonderful communication with God. If you watch the life of Jesus, even him, you'll find out in the midst of his preaching, in the midst of his healing, in the midst of his teaching and all that he was doing, we all know he would often steal away. 
and have conversation with his God. And, 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 and I said that you have to remember, I said you have to get away from everybody. Even Jesus didn't want to be bothered with anybody. Even the disciples, he got away from them. Y'all remember, he told them, wait right here while I go over here and pray. So sometimes, Lord have mercy, sometimes you got to get away from church folk and have prayer all by yourself. So Jesus, he teaches us it, it, how necessary it is for every believer to pray. And if any of you are afflicted, if any of you have some burdens that you can't handle by yourself, you don't have to handle it by yourself. You can pray. Listen, when you're having a bad day, pray. When your children act crazy, pray. When you're having a problem on the job, pray. When you can't get yourself together, pray. Listen, when you're getting on your own nerves, pray. Is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. But watch the text, church. Then he says, is any among you Mary? M-E-R-Y. Mary. In a happy fool. Then he says, you ought to be singing songs. And that, that song is the Hebrew word for songs of praise. He says, are any of you merry among you? Anybody happy? You ought to be singing songs of praise. He literally suggests that all of us ain't going through all the time. Okay, you missed it? Let me see, you missed it? Let, let, let me see if I can find somebody that can testify. I don't have a bad day every day. I mean, the Lord is so gracious, and, and I've had some wonderful seasons of love and joy and fulfillment and satisfaction. Anybody know being on the Lord's side will give you some times of completion, some times of wholeness, some times of joy? Who can testify every day is not a bad day? Listen, God deliver us from the saints who have a bad day every day. I mean, you ought to have a good day sometimes says if you're happy and if you're married you ought to be singing songs you ought to be praising God you ought to be lifting up lifting him up okay 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 and listen you you ought to be saying some things like I've had some good days I've had some heels some climb I've had some sleepless nights watch this but when I look around and I think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days so guess what I won't complain is there anybody in here who knows He's been real good to me. And every now and then, every now and again, you ought to be praising God. As good as God has been. I said you ought to be praising God. Here it is. Listen, every believer ought to live between the balance of praying and praising. If you're going through some stuff, you ought to be praying. If you're on the other side of it, you ought to be praising. But everybody ought to be communicating with God some kind of way. All right, let me give it to you again. Sometimes, somebody, you have to look at what's going on. If you are having a rough day, then you ought to start praying. If you're having a good day, you ought to be praising. Listen, everybody in here ought to be doing one or the other. Come on, choose a side. Which one you gonna be on? Which one you gonna, either you gonna be saying fix it, fix it, fix it, or thank you, thank you, thank you. But you ought to be on one side or the other. Listen, every one of us, if you are afflicted, you ought to be praying. If you are married, you ought to be singing songs, songs of praise. But all of us ought to be doing something. And that's what he's talking about when we're talking about stressed out. Supplication. So I'm stressed out. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get through whatever it is that I'm getting through. So I have to be having a little talk with Jesus. But watch this. Watch the movements. Watch the movements of the text. Because he does not just talk about stressed out supplications. He also talks about inspired intercession. And then remember I said oh, we was going to get to prayer partners after a while. He talks about inspired intercession. 
What he says is, if any of you sick, let him call for the elders of the church so that they can anoint them with oil and they are going to pray over them. And the prayer of faith is going to restore the sick. And if they have committed any sins, the Lord is going to heal them and forgive their sins. It's a beautiful picture, isn't it? He says that if you are sick, call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint you with all. Let them pray over you. And then once they do that, God is going to restore them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. If you sit, call for the elders of the church. Listen, you can't handle everything by yourself. Sometimes you got to bring in reinforcements. And, and, and he says, call for the elders of the church, and they're going to pray over you. And when they finish praying, the Lord is going to restore, raise them up, and let them know that trouble don't last. Always. Listen, this is some good information because what he says now is, is whenever you have some sickness in your life, whenever you have some sickness in your life, you don't have to handle it by yourself. Now, now this Greek word for sick, it doesn't mean illness. It can mean, but it doesn't mean illness. It means it's some uh, malady, it's, a, it's some infirmity, it's a disease on the body. On its face, it means illness. But if you dig deeper into this word, it does not just mean illness. It likewise means weariness. Weariness. When you're weary, weak, worn, when you get to that point, y'all, okay, let me put it. Y'all know how we talk. We, it's a little different. Y'all, I'm sick of this job. I know some of y'all in here would never say it here when that's in this church right now. Amen. Hallelujah. But when you got some folk who say, I'm sick of my spouse. It even gets to the point where you say, I'm sick of you. They look right back at you. I'm sick of you too. But there are some things in this world that are going on right now in this nation that will make you say, I'm sick of this. Listen, I'm sick of this pandemic. I'm sick of all these kids. I'm sick of being sick. I'm sick of being broke. I, and you had some days where, where you said, I'm sick of this. And hopefully you stop right there. I'm sick of this. You don't add that to the internet. Just stop right there. I've been sick of this. So stop right there. And sometimes we get like that. And when it gets like that in your life, listen, old James says, call in some backup. Call in some reinforcement. Call in some spiritual people who know how to go to God on your behalf. Listen, somebody who's not going to tell your business all over Oak Cliff and the suburbs. This is somebody who can be trusted with confidence of your life. He says, call on some spiritual people and let them go to God on your behalf and God will restore. Listen, anybody in here know that God will restore? If you go to him, you have a little conversation with him. If you call on some folk to say, hey, listen, I need some help. I can't make it through this by myself. Listen, I'm not ashamed of it. I'll tell you every now and again, there's some folk that I'll call on. I'll call on my parents. I'll call on some other people and say, hey, listen, I need you to keep me lifted in prayer. But every now and again, also, it says call on the elders of the church. And I've got some reinforcement that I know of right here in this church. I ain't gonna call them by name, but every first Sunday, the little old ladies were white. And listen, I, I, I listen, don't gotta call them by name, but they, they, they'll let you know they're your backup in prayer. And, and every now and again, I'll call on them and say, hey, can you pray? Can you do this, that, and the other? And when they start praying, Lord have mercy, something about a spiritual and effectual prayer of the righteous, when they start praying, you can feel it on the inside. Heaven starts shaking, and every time they start talking to God, listen, something starts shifting. Everybody yeah. know Anybody know that there are some seasons in your life where you're going to have to call on backup. You're going to have to call on some reinforcements. You're going to have to reach out to them and say, hey, listen, pray for me. 
He said, oh, 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 pray for me because I'm going to go crazy in here. I'm going to lose my mind. Pray for me because there ain't no telling what I might be, what I might do. Listen, pray for me because I'm sick of this. Right, stop right there. Any of you sick? Any of you weary? Any of you worn out? Call on the elders of the church. Listen, the Lord's going to restore because the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Lord, have mercy. When you get some righteous people in your corner, you can expect things to turn around. When you get some people that, that's on your road that know who God is, you can expect power to start coming through there. When, when you ask somebody spiritual to pray, you can believe something is going to turn around in God's timing and according to his own will. All right, but I, I, I'm, I'm done, done. I'm done. But watch this. Watch this. He gives it to us. He gives us a picture of stressed out supplication. Gives to us information on what is called inspired intercession. But let me close this out when I tell you about a portrait of prayer. A portrait of prayer. Because that's what James gives us in the conclusion. That's what he gives us at the end of this chapter. He gives us a portrait of prayer. Watch what he says. He says there was a man named Elijah. Who was a human being just like us. He, he, he had his quirks, he had his problems, he had his failures, he had his flaws. He is a human being just like us. But he believed in prayer. He knew that prayer can change things. So when you get down to the end of chapter 5, he says, Elijah prayed that it would not rain. And watch this. And it did not rain for three and a half years. And then he prayed again, and God sent the rain, and the earth was productive once again. All right, listen. Let me give you. Let me give you. Let me give you this picture. It, it actually comes from First Kings chapter seventeen and eighteen. When you get a chance, read that. First Kings chapter seventeen and eighteen. It says you will find out, and there you will find this out that Ahab and Jezebel had been leading the people of God astray. And old Elijah shows up and says that, that we ain't having no more of this. He said, this is it. He says, it, and then this is going to be it. Ain't nothing, no do, no rain going to come until I say something. That, listen, he meant business. When he said, no, not even the do in the morning is going to show up until I say so. Look, he looked in the face of Ahab. He looked in the face of Jezebel, the folk that was leading people of God astray and said no more rain because you are leading them all wrong. Watch this. So he began to pray. As a matter of fact, there's a widow woman there in chapter 17 who had a son who died who called for that man of God named Elijah. Elijah, watch this, laid over this woman's son and asked the Lord to restore his life. And God restored his life. And then he got up and he lived again. And she knew right then, this is a man of prayer. He was a regular old man. Remember, he was human. He had his ups. He had his downs. He even dealt with bouts of depression. But he knew something about God who hears and answers prayer. Listen, and then when you get to chapter 18, Lord have mercy, he begins to confront the prophets of Baal. Because they had been leading the people of God astray. He says, listen here, I'm going to challenge your God to challenge my God. And we'll see who God rule and reigns in victory. And as a matter of fact, he says, go and set up your altar to God. Go, go set up your altar to your God. And I want you to ask your God to strike down fire on your altar. He's that, listen, he's setting it up. Go on and do that. If you read 18, it's right there. Read it when you get a chance. He says, they set it up, and all of them started hollering and screaming to their God. They started dancing around from morning until the evening, cutting themselves, doing all crazy stuff. Watch this. And their God did not answer. Didn't even answer. 
Then Elijah, y'all know how we do. Elijah started talking. So what's wrong with your God? Is he on vacation? Is he sleep? Is he on break? And their God did not answer. He says, step aside, get out of the way. Let me show you who the true and living God really is. He said, listen, shut up my altar. Let me get my altar set up to God. And as a matter of fact, he knew, he, he had so much confidence in his God, our God. He said, listen, shut up this altar. Do what you got to do. Get it right. And after they got it set up, he said, all right, now I want you to put some stones around it. Put these stones around and dig a little trench around And Now I want you to put some water all around the altar. As a matter of fact, you can pour it on the altar. Go on and do what I need. Just go and do that. Listen, y'all God didn't show up. Don't worry about it. I understand. He ain't the real God, but let me show you something. He, and the Bible says when he started calling on his God, it said his fire came down from heaven. And everybody knew that Elijah's God was the true and living God. Listen, may I share with you this morning that when you pray, God will make your enemies be at peace with you. Lord have mercy. When you pray, God will prove to your haters that nobody can do what God can do. Listen, when you pray, God will make folk that don't like you have to at least respect you because you are the daughter or son of the living God. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. But watch this. The Bible says that after he defeated the prophets of Baal, chapter 18, he's still over there. The Bible says that he goes up to Mount Carmel and he says to God, God, now all of this is over. I've done what you needed me to do. Now he said, listen, it ain't rain here in three and a half years. He said, God, I need you to send the rain. Go and send it down to earth. I need you to do that. And the Bible says that Elijah crouches down with his head between his knees and begins to call on the name of the Lord. He begins to pray, believing that God is going to turn this thing around. Listen, he's praying to God, and then while he's praying, he sent a servant out after the first prayer and said, listen, go out there and tell me what you see. The servant came back and said, listen, I, I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing going on. All right, that's all right. He crouches right back down. Lord have mercy. Are you seeing this picture? He crouches right back down with his head between his knees and he calls on the name of the Lord. And you must understand that this is a birthing position of antiquity. It literally means that he's expecting something. He's believing in something and they're going to push Pray until something happens and something shows up. Oh, see, so you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. I said, this is the birthing position when he crouches down with his head between his knees. He's praying in expectation that they and they're believing in something and they're going to keep on pushing until something happens. Watch the text. Watch the text. The Bible says that he went and did this six times. Went did this six times, and on the on the seventh time, oh, yeah. he sent a servant out. Oh, yeah. He said, "Mr. Elijah, said I see a small cloud out there oh, yeah. that looks like a man's hand." Oh, yeah. Elijah said, "That's the rain. Oh, yeah. The rain is coming." He said, "It might not look like a whole lot to you." Oh, yeah. He says, "You might not see it right now." Oh, no. But, but I believe that because I'm praying and because I'm believing that something is about to happen. Now listen, listen, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how many times you don't have to pray. I'm not some false prophet that I, I'm not going to tell you that if you pray tonight that when you wake up in the morning all your problems going to be gone. No, I'm not telling you that. But what I will tell you is that God promised to answer when you pray. Listen, I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know when it's going to show up and turn that thing around. I need to know. But what you need to know is that prayer warriors in here who can look back over your life and begin to testify. Listen, when I pray, he may not have shown up when I wanted him, but he showed up, showed, he showed up, showed up right on time. I understand. Every now and again, every now and again, we have to Crouch down. Listen, I've even had to crouch down. 
I had to get down on my knees and keep pressing and keep on expecting and believing. Listen, you have to keep on praying in this thing we call life. Listen, is there anybody in here that knows that prayer changes things? Listen, is there a witness that knows that prayer still turns things around? Listen, I need some believers in here who can testify that I learned how to pray in my affliction. Listen, can you testify that I learned how to pray in my sickness, even in my sorrow? Listen, as a matter of fact, my afflictions are what made me pray. Listen, my afflictions or whatever was that I was going through. I thought that I could make it on my own. But these old afflictions, they started to weigh me down. So I started to call on the name of the Lord just a little bit more. Listen, who can help me and co-sign and say when you pray, God will answer. Listen, he will give you joy in the time of sorrow. Listen, he'll give you hope for tomorrow. Listen, if you're going through a storm right now, I heard him that he'll step out and stand on your storm and tell it, peace be still. Listen, sometimes you got to talk to God all by yourself. And when you're talking to God all by yourself, You'll find out that he'll come down and he'll whisper sweet nothings in your ear. What are those sweet nothings that he'll whisper in your ear? He'll tell you, listen, I already told you that I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Listen, he'll tell you, trust in me with everything that you have and watch me bring you through. Listen, he'll tell you, don't about your enemies. I told you I'll make them your footstools. Listen, he says, don't worry about that sickness. Do you not know that I've healed 10,000 already? And I got so many more that I'm willing to heal. Listen, he said, if you're hungry, I got some food for you. So don't worry about it. Listen, and if it gets too hard for you, remember when he said, call on the elders and tell them, come on, I need your help. And when you call on the elders, I'm reminded by him saying, when two or three are gathered, Lord have mercy, in my name, there will I also be in the midst. So we have to understand that the power of prayer is so major that we have to keep on praying. Don't stop praying wherever you may be in your life. Keep on having a conversation with them. Because if you keep on having a conversation with them, you'll find power when you're weak. Power to get you through. Power to tell your naysayers, get out of the way. I ain't got time for you. Power to look at all of your circumstances and say, God will make a way out of nowhere. So we ought to find ourselves in between two places, either praying or praising. Listen, if you're praying, keep on praying. If it brought you out, you better start singing it. So God, I thank you for your walking from a mighty long way. Keep praying. And see all of the trouble, all of the chaos, all of the things that are going on around us. It can be heavy. It can be hard to deal with, hard to see. But that's just the things that are going on around you. If you would just have to just look at what you're going through. Look at what you have to deal with. I get it. We want everything.
every day to be happy go lucky. We want every day to be a day of sunshine and a day when we just can skip down the sidewalk. But every now and again, you gonna have to bear a cross. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all? No, there's a cross for all of us. And sometimes that cross can get a little heavy. It could weigh us down. But that's when you gotta keep on praying. That's when you got to keep on pushing. That's when you got to keep on saying, God, this burden that I'm having to deal with, it was through your permissive will that I'm here. But guess what? I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on pushing. I'm going to keep on going where you will have me to go. Here's the mentality. Because what you have me going through, it's going to make me stronger. It's going to make me better. It's going to make me understand that. How many of you got some things right now? If you just look over your shoulder, you ain't even got to go to last year. Listen, you can go to yesterday. If you just look over your shoulder and say, God, it could have been me. But he kept you. He held you. He sustained you. Keep praying. Keep pushing. God wants to see you through. God wants to. And listen, Elijah told us, hey, I'm going to trust in him. The reason why the Bible tells us that he was human is because they wanted us to know that we, we have the same capability. Same capability that Elijah had, we had it. We can go to God and say, God, fix it right now. Lord, do it right now for me. Lord, have thine own way. Then all of a sudden you find yourself from praying to praising. And when you get on the praising side, Lord, have mercy. When you get on the praising side of telling God how good he's been to you, telling God, thank you for bringing me out. When you get on the praising side, tell somebody else how good God has been. Tell them, listen, I know you're going through, but I tell you about a man who's able, who gave his life that we may have it and have more abundantly, who laid down his life. Let me tell you about a man Help me over. He helped me get through. Let me tell you about a man named Jesus who they couldn't keep in a bar or two. Let me tell you about a man named Jesus who got up early one Sunday with power in his hand. Let me tell you about a man named Jesus. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask for. Jesus, keep praying. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't run from it. It may be God's design. He may be getting ready to set you up for something that you cannot handle in your present state. But when you come out, he's going to make you. He's going to make a way for you more than you know. The door is open. There may be one who wants to come for candidate baptism, rededication, or prayer. We extend this privilege to you right now in the name of Jesus. Listen, I, I, I'm just so excited that I have a God that I can call on in the midst of everything that's happening, in the midst of all that's going on. Why? Because I know that he's killed me. And I'm even more so excited that I can look around at some of you sitting in this pews right now. Because you hear God has killed you too. So I can praise him for y'all just a second. God has been good to us. And since he's been good, why don't we all just say thank you.
Sister Josephine Garrett and husband, she's not here. Y'all know she's always here. They are at home sick. But we know that God is a healer. We know that God can deliver and God can move. So I am going to pray. But while I'm praying, remember, prayers of the righteous avail much. And if need be, call on the elders of the church. And everybody, if we all on one accord praying the same prayer of faith, God is able to move in such a way that you can come out and say, look what the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Father. Here we are, God, with a bowed down head and an humble heart. God, coming right now with a few of your children who have come and turned towards you. Father, one has come on behalf of a father, God. One has come on behalf of saying, God, cover him. Keep him. Restore unto him. Hold him in the power of your might. God, we pray that you would move upon his heart, move upon his mind. But not only that, God, we know that you've already been a keeper. You've already been a sustainer. You've already held in the palm of your hand. But God, we want to go a little bit further. And God, pray that you bless not only this child, but all of the children. Father, that you would move upon them, that they can go on stronger in your name, knowing and believing that if they keep calling on you, God, that everything is going to be all right. Bless this grandmother. Father, touch her. This mother, God, be with her. Strength and lead and guide her. Allow her to continue to pour out what you poured into her, to each of these children. For then, God, the Hobbs family. Sister Hobbs, God, she's gearing up and preparing to go for a procedure. But God, we don't have to ask you to go there because you are already there waiting on But Father, we are asking that you would allow your hand to be ever busy in God in the search of God. We pray that your hand will be ever busy, God, in the healing and the restoration. We pray that your hand will be ever busy, God, that everything is going to work out, not only for her, but her daughter-in-law. Pray for this family. Lift, we're lifting them up to you, God, for we know that you are the one true physician who's able to do anything but fail. But then, God, the Garrett family who's home, who's recovering, God, move upon them as you see fit. We pray restoration right now in the name of Jesus. We pray healing, but God, everybody into the sound of my voice, God, let your power, your anointing, your covering fall fresh on each and every one of us right now in the name of Jesus. And then, God, we're, we're faithful people. We are faith-toned people. We'll be ever so careful right now to tell you thank you in advance. Standing on the boldness of faith saying, God, thank you for what you're going to do in advance. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the restoration. Thank you for the breakthrough. Thank you for allowing them to be able to come back to this place and say, God, you made a way. And we're thankful for what you've done. Keep us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. 
Amen. Okay. 